El Patron, Don Pablo, the King of Cocaine, whatever name it may be, Pablo Escobar still sends a chill up the spine. The deadliest and wealthiest drug lord of all time, Pablo Escobar was loathed by many, yet loved by others. But what was it like to work for him? Today on Nutty History, we're looking at what life was like as a hitman for Pablo Escobar. From first-hand accounts of his right-hand man Popeye, let's see what the job description really entails. And fair warning, this man was no cartoon character. But first, be sure to hit, see what I did there, that subscribe button for more nutty content. Watching Yonyaro Velasquez, more commonly known as Popeye or JJ, walk the streets of Medellin, you might think he's Mother Teresa. He's flocked by people asking for photos and autographs, as if he were a local hero, rather than an assassin who's killed 250 people and organized hits on 2,500 more. Of course, not everyone's a fan. After spending 23 years in prison for his crimes as a hitman for the Medellin cartel, where he says he survived seven assassination attempts, he was well aware of many on the outside who also wished him harm. Popeye, who earned the nickname during his brief stint in the Navy, considered himself a reformed man who served his time. Critics are angered by the frequent interviews, documentaries, book deals, and TV shows he participated in post-prison. Whatever your opinion may be, Popeye's leaning toward the spotlight gives us some of the most up-close and personal insights on what it was really like as a sicario for Pablo Escobar. If Popeye was a controversial figure, his boss was even more so. It might seem an easy choice to stick the bad guy label on the drug lord responsible for such widespread violence and death. But for locals of Medellin, the situation was a bit more complicated. Pablo Escobar's notorious catchphrase, Plata o plomo, spoke to a choice many were forced to make, silver or lead. While those who fought Escobar's reign were met with the lead of a bullet, those who helped him or even just looked the other way at the right time earned monetary rewards. Escobar also put money back into the local community, which earned the respect of poor citizens and the nickname of the Colombian Robin Hood. On the other hand, many of the families and friends of his victims were also locals who saw him as nothing more than a destructive murderer. An intense devotion to the boss and demonstrating that devotion was a crucial part of being a member of Pablo's crew. For Popeye, who says his deep allegiance to Escobar began from the moment he met him, this meant foregoing his own personal life and connections for the job. He met the kingpin, who he describes as magnetic when he was just 23 years old. In an RT documentary, Popeye claims he would have killed his own father if Pablo had requested it. That could have made Dad feel real good. He also didn't drink or date to maintain his focus. One apparent exception to this, however, was when he dated Wendy Chavariega Gill a former lover of Pablo Escobar's. According to Popeye, things turned sour between Escobar and Chava Villega Gil when she became pregnant, and Pablo Escobar forced her to terminate the pregnancy. Later, when she was dating Popeye, Escobar tapped her phone and revealed evidence that she was working with police and other government agencies to bring him down. Feeling like a pawn, Popeye arranged a hit on his own girlfriend, telling her to meet him on a date at a restaurant where she was shot and killed. How does Popeye justify his actions? He describes Medellin at the time as a war zone, cartel versus police, and the army, and the government, and the DEA, and the CIA. It was Escobar and his many friends versus the world. Hitmen like Popeye did a lot of damage as he claims the cartel killed some 540 policemen. Since it was war, they didn't discriminate between good cop, bad cop. Anyone in uniform was their enemy. Of course, the police hit back. Every time they left their hotel, it was open season. A handgun was Popeye's weapon of choice, and after killing so many, he had it down to an art, as he chillingly demonstrates on an interviewer for RT. As an assassin, he always kept his gun fully assembled and ready to go, but with the safety on. While he claims amateurs fire lower into a person's chest, he would fire two shots between the victim's eyebrows and hairline to ensure the kill. Another popular kill method under the cartel was bombing. Bomb-laden vehicles were a quick way to take out multiple police officers at once. And Popeye recalls watching the explosions from further back, keeping his mouth open to avoid damage to his eardrums. I'm guessing the movie trope of walking away from your own explosion doesn't quite hold up? Also on Popeye's to-do list, threatening, kidnapping, and at times assassinating Colombian politicians and government officials. 
particularly after Colombia entered into an extradition treaty with the United States in 1982. For Escobar and many of his followers, a Colombian grave was preferable to a U.S. prison cell where sentences tended to be much harsher. Luis Carlos Galán, the favorite presidential candidate in the 1990 election, supported extradition and cracking down on the cartels. After receiving numerous death threats, an assassination attempt was made on Galán with a rocket-propelled grenade when he visited Medellin. Due to intervention from the Colombian National Police, the attempt was thwarted, but Galán was later assassinated when he walked onto a stage to give a speech in Socha, an act that dramatically increased violence between the cartel and the Colombian government. War had officially been declared. Any judge that dared to open a case against Pablo Escobar also made the lethal list. Popeye describes that judges were more vulnerable as hits, without the many protections of top politicians. In the tragic case of Judge Gustavo Zuluaga Serna, who ordered Escobar's arrest for the murder of two security guards, hitmen in motorcycles trailed his car and shot into the vehicle, which also held his eight months pregnant wife. Gustavo was killed, but despite his wife Carmelita being hit three times, she survived and miraculously gave birth to their daughter 40 days later. As if the family hadn't suffered enough, Gustavo's son, who was looking into his father's murder, was suspiciously found dead months later. In 1991, Popeye spent a year in prison, sort of, with Pablo Escobar in La Catedral. If the cathedral sounds like a nice name for a prison, that's because this was no ordinary lockup. Pablo Escobar agreed to surrender and go to prison after the Colombian government amended the Constitution to take extradition off the table in a very sketchy and hush-hush deal. His conditions didn't end there, however. For starters, the police and government had to stay three kilometers away from the premises. Even more insane, Pablo Escobar's prison was built specifically to his liking, complete with a football field, ping pong, billiards, and a jacuzzi. Pablo also hosted prostitutes to the frat house, I mean, the prison. And Popeye says alcohol and marijuana use were part of their jailed bird lives as well. Not cocaine, though. Can't be getting high on one's own supply. As a hitman, Popeye was apparently never totally off the hook. He recalls having to kill two friends at La Catedral after they betrayed Escobar. It was the murders, four total, that were the last straw, making the Colombian government rethink this genius idea of a fake prison. But when they attempted to move him to a real prison, Pablo Escobar instead escaped. Hard to believe he made it out of that Fort Knox. Popeye remained close to Escobar until his arrest, a year before Escobar himself was killed. Despite his fast and dangerous lifestyle, Popeye died of cancer in February of 2020. While Pablo Escobar represented evil to so many, to Popeye he was a beloved friend. And apparently he's not the only one with conflicted emotions. Visitors continue to leave messages at Pablo Escobar's tomb, sometimes asking him to bless their guns, or even snorting certain white substances off his grave. We're not here to judge, but please leave your own judgments in the comments. And thanks for watching Nutty History.